My name is Sachi Kirshimura. Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Um, so I'm here today to speak about Japan, and I'm so glad that um, you came to a session about Japanese business. Um, JETRO is a government agency from Japan, and what we do is to uh, promote Japanese business among the world. So uh, we have 77 offices all around the world, and Los Angeles is one of them. And in recently, because um, the Japan's economy hasn't been too good for maybe tw nearly 20 years, 10 to 20 years, um, all the sessions which I atten attend around in Los Angeles, if it's like an Asian session, I'm, their most popular would be all, all, always the growing countries like China, Korea, uh, other Asian countries. But um, s recently, I feel that there's more interest in Japan again, and so Tonight, I'd like to uh, explain um, what Japan is, uh, the situation right now in Japan, and how the business is changing in Japan. Okay. Okay, what is JETRO? Um, we are sponsored by the Japanese government, the uh, e uh, Ministry of Economic and Trade. What they do is uh, try to establish Japanese business inside Japan, of course, but outside Japan. And so JETRO was, um, it's nearly been 50 years since we established, and why we were established was to expand the Japanese business going outside Japan. And so our Los Angeles offices was one of the first offices that uh, we had, and what we tried to do then was um, export Japanese goods to the world. And in that time, Made in Japan wasn't a really good reputation. It was cheap and always broken. But among these uh, 50 years, I think Japan has extremely changed its reputation. Uh, maybe in these years, uh, a bit uh, quiet, but I think uh, it's, it right now is a very good chance that Japan economy is changing. Uh, this is a chart that after the war, uh, um, in Japan, JETRO was established just after the war, and um, you can see those um, graphs. Uh, the and uh, the blue line and the red line shows the trade, import, export. So you can see it's extremely going up, and also the green um, lines that shows investment abroad, and the small lines uh, in the dark colored lines. Uh, is inward, in, inbound investment. So JETRO, first of all, was uh, trying to help out Japanese companies promote export. That was the only thing that first we were doing. But uh, as the technology developed and Japan has been changing, um, actually, because there was too much export from Japan, there, there was a trade, large trade deficit between the US and Japan. And that is then we had to change the way of our trading outside. And actually, JETRO, when we started, it was exporting, exporting. But at that point, we also uh, tried to import goods from abroad. So what we did was exactly the other way around. Uh, not just supporting Japanese companies going abroad or export, but trying, like US companies, to do business in Japan. Uh, so JETRO, in our office in Los Angeles, was helping out US companies trying to export. And um, that, w that uh, trend went for quite a long time, but then after the Japanese um, did this, uh, reached this bubble of the economy, there were so many investments. Uh, maybe uh, you, you have read that um, Japan once dominated, in a way, the US um, uh, um, real estate. They brought many, many real estate. And um, then also, like the Japanese automobile industry, it was really expanding. And I think in that air time, Japan has been really showing its really burst bubble economy. And um, actually, when I entered JETRO, it was quite a long time ago, but um, it was just after when the peak of the Jap Japanese economy. So everybody was like, um, like really thought that the Japanese economy would just expand. And you know, it's really funny because all of my colleagues thought that um, Japan was really going to do good. And so one of the reasons I entered JETRO was because I 
uh, thought that time that it was a really good chance for Japan expanding more. And so uh, actually Japan is more dependent maybe on government side. In the United States, I'm sure like, um, the, like the, uh, the government sector is something different and you, usually the business goes on its own. But uh, Japan still has this um, uh, tendency of maybe like small and medium sized companies wanting the help from the government. So I really thought that um, Japan would be like maybe domin dominate the world sometime. But uh, soon after that, the bubble burst and then suddenly Japan changed. And since then, um, what we tried to do was uh, promote inward investment in Japan because there was not enough uh, economy going on in Japan. And also, you know, they, we, we went back to exporting from Japan, especially on medium sized companies. So in these 50 years, like um, when Jetro started, Toyota was, nobody knew Toyota. Nobody wanted to drive on a Japanese car, but it really changes now. And right now, I think um, because the economy is not growing as we used to do, but it's in a very interesting um, era right now. Okay, this is a brief history that I was thinking. So, um, it was an end of the 80s that the economic bubble burst, and then the economy hasn't been going good for a long time. But Prime Minister Abe uh, took this new administration, and now uh, he has this um, idea that uh, Japan's economy is going back, so we call it Japan is back. And since then, uh, it's from uh, 2000. And, um, 11, 11, 2013, 2011 was the uh, disaster of the earthquake. So uh, Japan has to had many difficulties to recover. But in these couple of years, uh, I think Japan has done a good job. And I want to share those um, stories with you tonight. OK, so what is happening in Japan? Uh, the new e uh, economic um, development that the, the Japanese government is trying to do is really change their, uh, not just change the exchange rate. Uh, that was something that he first did, which, which was very good because right now for Japanese companies, exporting is much easier because of, uh, the price has been um, comparing to the yen and the dollar, it's more easier to export. Um, so that he just started to change everything. And one of the things that he's trying to do right now is change the, the structure of Japan. Um, uh, um, so uh, in Japan, um, I think the economy is trying to change, but also what it has to do is change uh, the structure itself, because we are unfortunately an aging um, uh, country as well. So even though the GDP has been really um, going up after the Abe administration, and also the consumer price has been going higher. That means more the consumers are, uh, are, are ready to spend money. However, we have a problem of the growing old. Japan is one of the fastest aging growing countries in, Japan, in, in the world. Like 20% of our population is over 65, which is really a large um, amount. And also, unfortunately, uh, we are shrinking as well because the birth rate is very low. Uh, the birth rate is very low is, is, is something that uh, the government is trying to change because there's women workforce, workforce comparing to the United States is, is still very low. It's changing right now, but um, it, it's in their kind of um, atmosphere that uh, un until when I was started my uh, work, uh, like I was uh, with my colleagues, that was more than 20 years ago. But the first job I did for one year was just to go, um, go in early in the office, clean all the desks up for everybody, and put some green tea for everybody. And that was, I, I did that for nearly one year. And comparing to that, my male um, colleagues were just starting working at the same time. And so uh, for two, or maybe three years after I started working, um, Japan has to change because there was this law enforced saying that uh, the women, uh, the workforce has to be equal to women and, and um, uh, women and males. So uh, after three years, they abolished their 
green tea ceremony. So uh, for maybe two years, men were also putting some green tea for other colleagues, but that wasn't too popular, so they changed all to coffee, so we don't have that anymore. But actually, that was what happened like more than 20 years ago. And um, because all my colleagues, was when, I, uh, when they started, there was um, 36 altogether, uh, women colleagues, but right now there's only five of us left. And that is mainly because um, for a long time, Japan's workforce was saying that women should leave the workforce well, um, first of all, it started like, if you get married, you have to leave your office. But after that, even though you, you, stayed mar you stay in the office even after you're married, when you have children, you have to leave. That was a long time problem. But right now, it's changing. Um, my, much of my younger colleagues, uh, maybe in the 30s, uh, they are really um, doing both. They're working hard, just same as um, male are. And, but also they are uh, married and having children and they, have, uh, uh, they can leave the, uh, our office for maybe one year and that is changing. So uh, the, that is a change by the government and what they're trying to do is like make more, more easy women workforce and then that will um, uh, uh, um, go, the birth rate will go up. And I heard, and I saw that by data, it's getting, uh, it's going up really gradually, but, uh, but uh, getting the, the, the old generations are more uh, um, regrow, growing than that. So we have a problem in, in, in this, um, in our demography. But however, uh, things, we, we uh, think, even though the old um, population is growing. One point is that the uh, population over 65 are very rich. Uh, there are, um, we have all the, we have um, retirement system. Usually you retire at around 55 or 60. And after that, uh, you have nothing to do because it's hard to find a job after you're retired. And so they have many, mo they have such amount of money, they're still healthy. And so what they do is um, th these uh, people will be somewhat of maybe a business chance for Japan and maybe also for the foreign company as well. So the Japanese market, it's, um, the GDP is ranked third in the world and the Japanese consumers are very um, picky in a way. Uh, they look for high quality, but they are ready to pi pay a good price if, they're consumer, if they are willing to consume. Okay, so this is just shows um, how the GDP of Japan's regions, like comparing with the where Tokyo is the is the Kanto, Kanto region, it's the same as um, UK, and so there are like many um, potential buyers that would be a good chance for um, Japan as well, and also for um, foreign companies. Actually, foreign companies had had hold a very high. Um, State um, sales, um, state of sales in Japan. Oh, um, like Coca-Cola, the soft beverage is the first is Coca-Cola. Um, there are many Japanese companies in the soft beverage area, but Coca-Cola is a dominant um, company. Also, coffee. Uh, Nestle from Switzerland is the first, but there's another company. This is actually a U.S. company, Mondred International. Actually, they are have um, own many of. Um, chocolates or candies as well, but they also have a coffee session, a, a um, coffee department. And But recently, this data was like last year, but I've heard that um, they sell some of their coffee um, industry to Japan's Ajinomoto, so maybe this um, might change, but uh, you can just see that how um, US companies are doing great. And also Johnson Johnson for uh, contact lenses, and eyeglasses, it's actually 70% of the um, whole industry. So um, there are also many good uh, Japanese companies making contact lenses, but uh, Johnson Johnson is number one. So there are so many um, current US companies in Japan. Um, like Coca-Cola or McDonald's, um, they've been here uh, in Japan for a long time. 
uh, maybe uh, they started in the uh, some of the started on the early 1970s area. So um, they are very dominant right now. But uh, one point is that maybe large companies um, like these companies. Uh, uh, because they have made, of course, budget as well. But uh, when the, all these companies are successful, are really having a kind of point that they look for a long-term commitment in the, the in their market itself. Okay, uh, we did a survey um, on foreign investors or foreign companies in Japan. Uh, so the number one like negative images of Japan would be like cost. It's very expensive in Japan. Maybe still is, but uh, right now for the yen rate, I think it's different at the yen and the dollar rate. It's much more easy right now for investment, but still the cost itself is um, relatively high comparing to make China or Korea or other Asian uh, countries. So that is something that uh, the foreign investors would like um, think that maybe it costs too much. And also, um, the market is very, in a way, closed. Um, I think uh, some companies, uh, the boom for investment in Japan was, um, first of all, it came in the 1980s, uh, that's the first comers. And, but the peak was like in um, um, 1980, um, sorry, 1990. Um, eight, and that is why uh, that that was a really a trend in Japan because maybe the cost has been more um, uh, cost really high, but there is a more large larger market for the for for the foreign companies because uh, Japan was looking for um, more new goods and everything, and but um, they still have a very uh, close image. Of course, um, the Japanese distribution is it's so different from the United States. And also, uh, well, the, it's very complicated to actually go through the regulations in some areas, um, especially um, one area would be like medical devices or something to do with the house. It was very difficult. And also, um, many business rules. Well, um, that's not all in Japan, but maybe you knew, know that, like, um, do you know, like, exchanging name card? That was actually uh, not invented, but that first was uh, done in Japan. And, like, um, 30 years ago, uh, I've heard that when um, the Japanese company goes and gives a name card, uh, um, all the U.S. companies say, what's this? But finally, that was something that was adapted here as well. So I think, um, like, business rules are very diff different. And that makes a kind of um, think the the image of the maybe closed market, and also um, the language problem. Um, some of you, if you have been to Japan, uh, everybody's maybe nice and try to speak English, but for business, it's really hard hard, hard to find a English uh, speaker that will work for you, and. Um, this is relatively um, comparing to other Asian countries. Um, even though China has the language problem, but also China has this um, really fast-growing rate of um, uh, young generations going abroad, working, um, studying in United States or UK or Europe, and they go back to China. So I think um, uh, this language problem is still in in one of the large. Um, maybe problems for foreign investors as well. And also like um, higher competition. It's not just um, comparing to foreign comp competitors. Uh, Japan all itself has so many like com companies competing each other inside Japan as well. For instance, for the electrical maybe um, companies like Toshiba, Sony, uh, there are so many um, companies inside Japan that has to be competitive with each other. So it's uh, you have to look at which part of the market you're looking for, but, but, it, but otherwise it's going to be very high competition. And also, um, there you need it takes a long time to do contracts with Japan, and um, so you have to really look into uh, a long commitment because just for instance like um, right now Jetro is trying to match make US companies and Japanese companies here and in Japan and like in Japanese companies it takes really time to decide one thing uh, to just 
go back to uh, like um, answer to one email, it takes time. Maybe the language problem, but also because the Japanese companies has so many um, well management um, different departments, and he has to go s through that. So it does take time, and so these um, foreign investors uh, ideas negative image. I think much of this is very true. But I think this is uh, something that um, if you look into it and maybe you can change the business chance as well. Right now, even though Japan is um, maybe in a way shrinking as an economy, but it's interesting because there's many foreign companies actually trying to um, invest in Japan right now. So like um, Johnson & Johnson, they are they were already here uh, in Japan for a long time, but actually they are going to expand their business um, in, in the R&D section, and also Google, um, GE. And so the, these large companies who are already there uh, in Japan are thinking about um, investing in R&Ds or things like that in Japan as well. And also for new arrivals, um, the Tesla Motors, uh, there are still like um, very few people who are actually riding Tesla motors, but it has this good image in Japan, and so I think because um, uh, their image of like eco green, that might be something that the Japanese would really like. Uh, also, um, Taco Bell. Uh, it was interesting because last week there was a um, large um, uh, conference in Irvine about global market business. And the CEO of the Taco Bell was one of the speakers then. And uh, I'm not sure if anyone knows, but Taco Bell just went to Japan recently and it was they're doing a really good job, massive success for the opening. Actually, Taco Bell, uh, they were there uh, four years ago, but uh, they, uh, it wouldn't work out then, and they backed up. I've heard because maybe um, in, in Japan, maybe like Mexican food, there are Mexican food, but tacos, it's not so popular in Japan as in here. And also the marketing, maybe they didn't um, like change the way of um, presenting their food there. So I've heard they uh, just went uh, four years ago, they didn't work out. So that they left Japan. But again, they, uh, this year, I'm sorry, that last year, they went to Japan. And what they did so different was, is like um, thinking about their branding image, and the CEO was saying like, because um, Taco Bell are uh, really comparing to like um, McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, they are ma basically um, based on the US uh, profit but they're changing in these three or four years. And Japan is one of the new targets that they uh, focused on. So Japan really has this um, good image of made in USA or United States, special California. So Taco Bay is originally from California. So what they did is, um, I, I haven't been there in Japan, but I saw these all these um, photos, but they have this California image. Uh, they put, the, uh, they really put lots of um, palm trees or surf, surf, uh, like surfer image in the shops. And also they were like targeting very young people in Japan who, uh, Maybe some of the people are aware of tacos again, and so they did a marketing on the on the really um, young generation in social media. So the opening, they they were such a long queue, all day long, to wanting to enter Taco Bell, and um, the shop. The CEO was saying that the shop itself is very different from here. Uh, it's more maybe high end images. Uh, there are um, all the all the. You, they can see the, um, all their kitchen is uh, see-through by glass, and they can see how the tacos are made, fresh. And um, also, this was uh, they were targeting in social media, using it very well. So, uh, like on the day it it, uh, it was open in Shibuya, it's a very um, uh, large city, famous for young people going there. So what they did was have like um, you, I'm not sure if they're US, but like um, uh, surfers wearing, having a surfboard and just working, say, going to Taco Bell. And that really hit it. And so I've heard they're doing very successful. And um, that means that if you like Target right, even though there's so many franchises in Japan already, Japan is always looking for something new. So that's one thing that uh, was a recent success. 
Um, also, um, house, it's a uh, remodeling housing from uh, the company. Uh, they were very good because they thought, like, the, uh, um, as I said, Japan is aging. It has a negative image, it is, uh, is per, um, like, for, for some, doing something new. But actually, they targeted because the, J the Japanese population was aging. They're thinking that they would like to remodel their uh, uh, apartments or houses to maybe a more like um, uh, like a free barrier area, and also there are uh, because all the children are uh, because they're just only the 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 uh, the couples already all the children's graduate. Maybe they like to change their house to a different remodeling. Maybe um, in Japan still they live uh, there. It is um, kind of a tradition that you live in the same um, house. It especially not in maybe in Tokyo, but um, uh, rural areas that um, usually all the families, maybe three generations, live in the same house. But they were think, thinking that um, remodeling would be really good, and they are doing very successful because they they have this good image of the remodeling. Uh, really, um, um, they use very nice kind of images and pictures of new housing, and that is very popular among Japan as well. So, like, just um, one of the image might be um, negative for um, for aging, but maybe that will be a business chance as well. And also Vitamix, um, there it, it's it's very popular in Japan. Every, um, the Japanese like uh, right as in California, uh, it, it's it's very healthy image. So even though these Vitamix, they're more ex very more expensive in Japan, but it is very um, doing very well as well. And iRobot. Do you know? I'm not sure if everybody uses them, but I I bought it by myself. Ira, but it's some, it, it's a cleaner. It cleans by yourself, and um, this first of all uh, was a good example for um, uh, adapting in Japan. First of all, Japan is a very small. Usually, the houses are much smaller comparing to the United States, and so first of all, like um, traditional. Um, Maybe um, old folks didn't like the idea that some robots cleaning up their stuff there, but um, actually they targeted to the new generation. The maybe because the women women work first uh, outside, they need someone to clean up their rooms. But uh, so they targeted doing the PR on um, uh, ma mainly uh, young generations of women work. Uh, um, around 20 or 30s, and so they targeted um, them as uh, uh, their main customers. So they did that very well as well. And also, like um, because Japan is very picky for customizing, uh, they uh, uh, they usually the iRobot they usually don't have this aftercare in in, here in the United States, but they made this 24-hour call center. Um, asking for um, like uh, like if there's something that they think that they're broken or they want to um, use it again. Usually, like in the United States, I think um, if it's broken, you just throw it away sometimes. But in Japan, they really hate the idea of throwing something that it still works, so they want to really actually reuse it again. So that's why, especially in Japan, uh, they have this uh, call center and also customized customer center to take care of that. So that, these are the things that's so different um, comparing to the US market. But if you look at the goods point, then that might turn to a really huge success. So um, the key to success, this is really common, and I'm sure everybody um, knows this uh, and has been studying this, customization and localize. This is, uh, this is the first key, of course. Like um, uh, in Japan, uh, like uh, there was uh, 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 in Disneyland, there's a large Tokyo Disneyland in Japan. Um, the person from um, Disney was also talking at the conference um, last week, and he was like um, explaining how different the market was in Japan, very comparing to even other countries. So the, uh, Disneyland, they're um, basically licensing their rights, but um, they're uh, opening Shanghai, Disneyland as well, and also um, in many different countries, Hong Kong, and also other in um, Indonesia, India, and other countries as well. And um, they were saying that localization is so important. 
for instance, for Disneyland, uh, in, in Disneyland United States, they, th they think as a customer as like a four family, mother, father, and two kids. That was a kind of role model of the people who will come to Disneyland. So like um, they have to be um, maybe, maybe higher than middle income um, um, customers, but so they made all every, everything so enjoyable for the kids and the pa parents. So like, um, but in, in um, China, they said they were so surprised that um, because in China they, uh, they only uh, had this um, one kid um, and only having one kid for the whole family because their population is growing too fast. I've heard it's changing right now, but because of that, if you go to Disneyland, there'll be only one kid, but also there'll be both of the grandma, grandpa, and also the mother and father. And so they have to look for like eight adults to one child. And what that means is that um, usually one child take, um, and one adult, one adult just take care of one child, and so they go and play in Disneyland. But otherwise, um, most of the adults use Disneyland as a socialite for socializing. So they had to bring, um, bring more restaurants, larger impacts, and also they changed some food to into Chinese food, so it would be more popular, and so that was something that they had to adapt. But um, also, um, comparing to like Japan, it was so different market. They were saying that in the whole world, Japan is so um, different because the main target is not kids, families. Actually, the most um, spendable consumer is a woman from 16 to 24. They love Disneyland. And I thought, oh, that's true because um, Disneyland, uh, when they, it was so popular in Japan, of course the families went as well, but also like um, adults, uh, maybe young, early teenagers would go for dates to Disneyland. And also there was a huge fan of Japanese, maybe woman that still likes Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse or Disney stuff, even though they're young adult. And so um, they had to target mainly on the retail side because they only had like toys or goods from uh, Disneyland but only for like children. So they s changed their um, consumer retail line to something that uh, adult women would really love. And also they put price higher, more, more higher. And so that was something unique but also successful. So um, I, I think like um, changing that, seeing small things like that, that is very important. But um, I think even though localizing that, um, of course you have to do that, but I think you shouldn't change your like, own branding or policy in a way. So Disneyland was saying that, of course, but we're not gonna change like the main characters, of course. We can customize maybe the restaurants or something else, oh, of course. And also in China, they were saying that um, there were all the customers, because they were adults, they wanted alcohol in Disneyland, so they changed that rule as well. So something like that, it has to change. But, but the main characters, what they did was uh, basically for families, that, that didn't change. And I think that's uh, important in many other aspects as well. So um, I think um, like saying, being, um, saying this as a point for Japanese market, actually this is for both ways because um, right now I'm helping Japanese companies doing business here as well. And um, it's funny because like um, the Japanese companies would like to succeed here. There's many small and medium-sized companies wanting to do, expand their business here, but they don't localize. They, they think like, especially maybe one area that we support is food area because Japanese food is popular right now, ramen, things like that, they, they would like to, open new restaurants in here um, um, and also maybe produce their Japanese um, food more to the local market. But what they do is they, they because they really think that, that's a good thing, but they really think uh, their, their product is really good enough to go an anywhere. So they don't change any the packages. They just put some, um, like um, the p package the same as Japan. And sometimes it works because it's rare, but Otherwise, you can't, you can't see what it is, and so uh, most of the cus um, US customers say, can't you change this, can't you change that? And then they learn and they localize. So I think that's um, 
the same, uh, totally same, and even though a Japanese company coming here. So uh, I think like customization, localization has, has a mi mix of both ways. So that's um, one thing about the Japanese market. Um, uh, but I think because if you would like to succeed in Japan, uh, this is, uh, we say the same thing to the Japanese companies here, but you have to, uh, you can go there and invest, but maybe you should really look for a good partner. Uh, the J maybe a Japanese partner who knows how your products are good. Uh, maybe they can um, tr uh, do the, all the translation and everything. So I think um, what we, what Jetro does uh, here and in Japan is to try and help uh, many companies, Jap uh, U.S. companies or other foreign companies, to actually find a partner in Japan or do whatever uh, best things. Because to success, it takes time, and also it takes a lot of money. But also, what is important is finding a good partner. Okay, so these are some of the target industry. I think it's good for Japan. Um, of course, the energy uh, ecosystem. Uh, Japan, after the disaster of um, the large earthquake of uh, 2011, uh, I think there, the energy problem has been uh, there for a long time uh, of the nuclear uh, uh, power. There has been so many talks about what sh Japan should do, what should it go. But um, first of all, they are right now regulate, deregulating their uh, electrical um, area, the industry. That was dominated only in this few Japanese companies that already existed. So the, the government is trying to change that for not just Japanese companies to come in as well, but also for foreign companies as well. And um, also um, health um, care. There are so many um, old, uh, like, because there is a large population of aging Japanese consumers. That would be an area for maybe not just for products or uh, for consumer goods, but also because of the health problems. Uh, Japan is looking for uh, new technologies for uh, curing your. Um, disease or error. So Japanese companies are also looking looking for partners, especially in the bias area as well, and also uh, medicines. Uh, this area has been re um, really uh, closed for a long time, but recently, because Japan, the, the Japanese government is trying to have more foreign investment and having more. Um, um, economic um, like um, power from from other countries, they deregulated uh, the uh, pharmaceutical area, and so that only because um, Japan has been that that area has been really like um, closed even into for the Japanese um, medicine companies uh, because you you for a long time they couldn't buy any like medicines on e-commerce for a long time and also there was safety regulation and that is very important but Japan is trying to change that as well so this would be a new area that uh, uh, would be good for investment also well retail uh, and tourism tourism this uh, tourism of, of course it's been really one of the um, targets that the government is trying to do uh, right now there are if you go to Japan I've, I've um, been here for three and a half years I go and go maybe once in a year to Japan but I'm so surprised that there's so many tourists in Japan but mainly for maybe China or Asian countries because of they're more closer and um, they are really doing good but uh, the Japanese government is trying out to have these kind of passes to, to travel around Japan really cheaply, things like that, so Junior's at as well. For the retails, as I said, there are so many um, uh, images, good images of made in, J uh, made in United States in Japan, that will also be an area that would be good for investment. Um, this is uh, just going over what kind of um, sectors that would be interesting. Uh, just put food and beverage here. Uh, because TPP was, made, was finally re reached agreement, this would really change not only Japan, but the whole Asia. Uh, for instance, 
wine is they have a very high tax uh, on wines in Japan. But this, if this goes up, well, there are so many chances for maybe importing California wine. Uh, there are regulations for, for, uh, for food and beverage, but things like that would change. So I think um, you should watch out the TPP because many of the taxation or the service system is going to change. And Japan has been a large, one of the largest economies in the TPP country membership. I think um, it will affect Japan very much. Uh, in the agricultural side in Japan, this has this negative idea saying that, oh, maybe because there's been so many imports, our agricultural industry might collapse. Uh, there are things like that going on, them, but uh, I think for the consumers, it's going to be definitely good, good, a good thing uh, that you can actually um, import more uh, cheap and good, more, more goods cheaply, and that will change the whole, maybe, the market as well. So this is what we try to watch as well. Okay, and so um, Japan's Japanese government right now is um, having this kind of um, trying to promote white Japan. The, ec the economy is growing again. Uh, also, the market is large. And also, we have many um, innovation um, hubs. Uh, intellectual property is really, um, maybe comparing to other Asian countries, we have our IP um, legal system that is working. And also, we have many, many scientific um, institutions and um, universities would like to work with foreign companies as well. And the business-friendly infrastructure is, um, I'm not sure how many of you have been to Japan, but the high rail, uh, high speedway, um, it's called the bullet train, but uh, so you can go anywhere. Well, Japan is a relatively small country. The whole um, area itself is the same as California, but we have many um, good access on those trains, and also we are very um, uh, famous for keeping in time. So it's, uh, we think that doing business in Japan is much easier as well. And comfortable living, this means um, Japan is the number one safe country um, in, in comparing the world right now. Mm, still, of course, there are dangerous things happening in Japan, but like in the evenings, you, you would never think of walking around alone and in, in um, maybe Los Angeles, maybe sometimes in downtown or so, but in Japan, uh, even though uh, the, the trains are usually uh, working until like after midnight, so after midnight there are many um, young ladies walking to their homes for like really dark in like 15 or maybe 20 minutes walk, but it's, it's supposed to be safe, so that's something one point that it's very good in Japan. And also, uh, right now, the exchange rate is much more good for like if you want to well, do business in Japan, it's much more cheaper than um, it used to be. Okay, just to show you some um, status so that the Japanese government is trying to uh, increase the foreign direct investment by, two, by 2020. So, to do that, um, we are still re regulating many, um, maybe in taxations, we have a special zone, business zone that we could do. And also, uh, what we're trying to do is really de deregulate all the regulations. Uh, right now, we are focusing on the electricity side, energy side, but and also the medical side, medical devices, bio side. And that would be a sector that would be um, open as well. But still, um, what we're trying to do is because there are so many regulations still. So what we we do in our offices here is ask, like, if you, for U.S. companies, if we're trying to enter Japan and has some problems, we um, have the feedbacks and we actually go to the Japanese government asking, why can't you change this? Why can't you, like, maybe um, open this market? And um, it, it's surprising that uh, usually it takes time for the government to do this, but it's. It, this, uh, these couple of years has been very fast. They've been moving much more faster than the recent years. So I think um, it's a very good timing for if doing business. Um, I'm sure you're going to 
it's going to be a, a, a maybe a few years until you actually start a business. But if you just um, look in Japan right now, um, until 2020 is also a year that we're having a Tokyo Olympics there. That means there will be many um, chances for our, uh, new businesses. Uh, I've heard because of the Tokyo Olympics in, in 2020, there are already some of the like sport companies or, produ uh, or services, uh, tourism that are active starting to just start now because um, if you just um, start up late, it's going to be too late. But everybody, maybe uh, you should look at Japan at, at the year of 2020. That might have more, many more business chances coming on. Uh, this is something that uh, one of the service, uh, what we do is we uh, provide three months uh, office space uh, totally free. free. Um, we have a consultant there. Uh, translator there. Of course, you can have your, uh, if, if uh, we have a phone, you have um, internet, everything. So these are the things that the government is trying to support uh, for foreign companies as well. So um, maybe if you could, if you can start uh, thinking about um, starting up in business in Japan, maybe you should remember something about Jetro and maybe you can contact us. We might have more services ready for you. Um, um, then because right now we're trying to change everything and we're hoping to have more investment in Japan. Okay, so um, also we have um, offices, six offices are in United States, uh, Los Angeles offices in downtown. Uh, we have uh, 10 staffs, 10 to 11, 12 staffs uh, at our office. And so if you'd like to list, um, hear about any um, j Japanese market or study or need na data or actually want, wanting some um, uh, contact with Japanese companies, do business, you can always contact us and um, we try to help you in, in things. We have many market um, reports that maybe we could interest you as well. So uh, that's about what we do. And uh, I'd be really happy that uh, if there are, if I can have any questions for you, because my uh, presentation was really based on um, maybe a few of the facts that uh, might interest you. Uh, today I um, had uh, maybe introduced you some of the um, um, maybe on the investment side, but also we help out um, export to Japan as well. Also, if you're looking for maybe, um, right now in, J in Los Angeles, we have another um, association like us, uh, um, sponsored by the government. They're on the cultural side. Uh, they're called Japan Foundation. And what they do, they have these Japanese classes. Um, they screen Japanese films as well, and so we work out together because if you have any interest in that side, um, also that might be of your interest. So um, that's about it, it for me. So if you have any questions, I'll be really happy to answer them. Thank you.